J. Lyons & Co. was the largest catering company in the country. It employed about 30,000 people. They had an extremely large and very efficient back office operation. Loads of clerks checking the addition on all the waitresses' bills and so on. And it was a, a very innovative and inspiring manager right back in the 30s who looked at all these young women with adding machines and thought, we ought to be able to automate this. The idea that somebody, that a business like a catering business, a food business should do it, surprised many people. But those who knew Lyons weren't so surprised because Lyons had been in the forefront of innovation in business processes for many years. Lyons were very uh, courageous in taking this step forward. Nobody had done this uh, before, before us. It was only the third computer in the country and it was being built to do payroll, to do uh, orders for the tea shops, completely different applications. Nobody had ever thought of using a computer like that before. The Leo one was an enormous machine. It occupied a huge room. Uh, it had racks of uh, electronic equipment, over 6,000 valves, uh, which got very hot. The memory uh, at the time was actually tubes of mercury about five feet long and an inch across and there was a bank of 64 of these things under the floor. We had a series of challenges. Nowadays you've got unlimited storage. In those days we had very, very limited storage. So, so the programmer had to be rather clever how he manipulated things. There was only 2K, I think, altogether, which had to hold all your instructions. Life was a continual challenge to actually get a completed uh, program. It's difficult to imagine now the sheer excitement of, of the group we worked in. First of all, they were rather high caliber people. I mean, you very rarely uh, got such a group of people with such ability and such enthusiasm. It's a constant buzz of excitement, because we were doing something new every single day. And that made it almost constantly exciting. First of all, you worked extraordinary hours, but, but then you came home in the evening and thought about what had been done. It was really quite, quite exceptional. I was designing circuits night and day for months on end uh, and working at an incredibly fast rate. Remember we spent one very long session uh, trying to find an intermittent error. Eventually it was found that it was interference from the manager's lift, which wasn't very far from where the computer was. I joined the company in 1949 and in 19, the Christmas 1953 we were already running a payroll for several thousand people. All 10,000 Lions staff were getting their pay calculated by the computer uh, and it was arriving in their pay packets on a Friday and it never went wrong. The kind of things that were done by Leo in those days would be modern by today's standards. We were doing what we now call management information systems in our very first applications. We knew we were pioneers and innovators in that sense, but I don't think we realized that we were living at the beginning of a new age, an age which transformed everything. We were pioneers in this industry, and it is, I think, essential that things like this should be known. People tend to plunge into things now without the thinking which went behind the Leo applications. That lesson has to be A, remembered and B, really relearned re in some cases. So, so that's why well, that's the importance of Leo. I think we need to be reminded that here in Britain, here in London, we had uh, one of the most remarkable technological advances of the 20th century. And that the people who worked on the Leo computer pulled off something absolutely remarkable to actually think, to see how a computer could fit into a business and do all the things that we now just completely take for granted. I think that's really special. It's an experience I would never regret having uh, gone through uh, and very proud to have been part of that team. Uh.